Will you and your friends sit down for a chilling RPG experience? Can you survive the night? Now, as I said, we're going to be doing the Aqua Long scenario from Survive the Night game. And you're going to want to pick that up because I'm not going to tell you about the adventure in these videos. I'm just going to basically show you the build and that kind of thing. So if you want to pick up the adventure yourself, make sure you head to the website. I'll have the link below the video. Hey friend, great to have you back with me. Now, my problem was that I needed miniatures for this game, and you know, it's really actually really hard to find normal, unarmed, modern day kind of miniatures for normal people. It's really hard to do that. So I found a great solution because I wanted to maintain the cheapness of that. I don't want to spend a bunch of money on miniatures and all that kind of stuff for one game or one off. So I found a cheap solution. All right. And uh, let's hit the table and I'll show you how I overcame the problem with uh, expensive miniatures. Drum roll, please. And the miniatures I'm talking about are these cardstock miniatures. Okay, these are cheap and super easy to make. I got my killer along with my terrified civilians. So this is a great solution to expensive miniatures. Now, I did these in exactly the same way as my tabletop crafter guildmate Wylock did, Bill, William. And uh, he has a great vid showing you how to do this. So I'm not going to redo this and show you how to do it. Head over to his channel. Check out this great vid on making these cardstock miniatures. I am going to show you where I picked them up. To pick up these paper minis yourself, you want to head over to Drive Through RPG, and I typed in "panicked civilians," right? And I got this great set of civilians that you can use. There's a, it, there's even more than I have shown uh, in the picture there. Uh, so great set of civilians, paper minis, super cheap, and you're good to go. Now for the uh, killer. Uh, that was a little tr trickier, but I did find something that I thought was really cool. There's a survival horror extraction team, and there's some guys in black with masks and everything. And this really reminded me of kind of Aqualung's suit. And uh, one guy has a flamethrower, right? But the flamethrower, you know, he's, not, he's using a harpoon gun. So what I did is I just cut off the flame at the end when I cut the mini out. And also he has tanks on the back, so that looks great as far as being for, you know, Aqualung, that he has, uh, you know, the Aqua suit on and everything. So I think he worked out perfectly for the killer. So there you go. Cheap, two cheap solutions, two cheap and easy solutions for you guys uh, to have your miniatures at your game without spending a bunch of money. All right, friend. Now the next challenge was how do I show the water rising in the module? Okay. Because that's one of the most dramatic things about it. The water level's rising and you've got to get out of here before you get trapped and you drown, right? So that's very dramatic and cool. But how do you do that? How do you show that on the tiles? Okay. So I came up with a cool way to do that. I'm going to show you in a second. Okay, let's get back to it. All right. Now, I thought it'd be nice to show you the uh, concept of the water rising, okay? So here we start, we have the starter room, and it's totally bone dry, like the, the players wake up and they're in this room. So as they start to move out into the passageway, you can see the channels in the passageway. I've inserted some water, okay? These are strips of water here. And as they move out, from those hallways, the other rooms start filling up with more water, all right? Now, if they go back, uh, I'll insert uh, the full pieces of the water into these, and every piece in this death trap dungeon will have the water inserts like this, right? And here at the end, you can see how great it looks. It really, really looks good. And here's the idea behind this, okay? It's kind of a fool's errand to show the level of the water. You want, uh, because you want control of that as the GM. You want to be able to say, oh, the water's at your ankle, the water's at your knee, the water's at your waist, right? And if you did some kind of system that show, actually shows that, you've got the problem of using the 3D terrain and the miniatures together. Uh, and that's going to be really a tricky proposition. 
So what I did is I figured I would do the inserts for the tiles uh, and you can see that the water's there, but then the GM describes the water level to the players as they wish, because in the scenario it kind of says it's the GM's discretion, it's the teller, you know, the, the storyteller's discretion how high the water is at particular points. If they're rushing through it, you want the water to run faster, to raise higher, faster. If they're taking their time, you might want it to be slower. So there's no set really rate of the water rising. It's all the thematic elements of it. So this has just seemed to me a very simple sol uh, solution to give you the sense that the wa there's water in here. Uh, and it, I think it looks great. So let's go to our table and I'll show you how to actually easily, simply and cheaply make these uh, water uh, inserts for your tiles. You may ask, hey DM Scotty, how did you make these water inserts? Well, I use these cutting mats. I picked these up at the Dollar Tree. I got about five uh, sets. There's two in each. And it's a great uh, plastic to use for this, right? And uh, yeah, and super cheap. So I just uh, measured it out on my cutting mat. I used a razor knife and cut an inch width strip. And that will be the channel for those first tiles, right? So very cool, super easy. You can just drag the knife along it and it'll eventually cut through it or you can rip it off or use scissors, uh, whatever works best for you. And uh, once I got that measured out, then I started doing the entire tile with the three inch uh, wide strips, right? And these are three inch wide by nine and a half long. And I just uh, insert those in there and there you go. Now the only thing that's a little more tricky are the circular rooms, right? The rectangular room I did essentially the same exact way. The circular room is a little more difficult, but you can do this, crafter. It's not that hard. So take your template that we use for our uh, tiles, right? And see how I'm kind of kind of lined up on the cutting mat? Because I'm going to have a 3-inch strip coming out from the center of it uh, down the mat. So I'm going to cut around the circular piece and then the 3-inch... Uh, measured from the center of that down away from the circle and that'll give me the piece I need and once I get that cut I can kind of measure the length um, on the tile itself now when I cut these out I tend to use scissors to cut these out it just seems to be a little easier than trying to push that knife you know through and the circular part I find that easier you can do whatever you like uh, and then for the smaller channel if you want to have the smaller channel when the at the beginning, if they go back to the main room, you can do that and just cut the strips uh, smaller so it's just in the center of the channel and not the whole uh, tile. So there you go. That's all you need to do to do the circular tiles. But you're like, whoa, wait a minute, Scotty. Okay, now that the tiles you showed earlier, the inserts you showed earlier, had water texture on them. These are just plain translucent inserts. So what's going on with that? All right, guys. Well, I'm going to tell you. You could use these uh, inserts with just the you know you know the translucency of it, and not worry about any kind of water texture. But the water texture really takes it to 11, right? It's really cool. So let me show you how I did that. Uh, it's super easy. So here's what I use, guys. This Vallejo water texture, and it's transparent. So this stuff works great, and uh, you can pick it up my link below if you need to find it. So here we go. I've got an insert here, and I'm going to paint the water texture on it. And I'm just using like a chip brush, a rough brush, and just brushing it right on. And I want to brush it on roughly because I want the water texture, right? So that's all there is to it. You just brush it on, let it dry, and you're good to go.